and welcome back to the next section of our acid-base series, which today we're going to look at weak acids. So a question I'm often asked by students is, how do I recognize strong acids and bases versus weak acids and bases? And what I'd often say is the strong acids and bases are names that you would typically be familiar with, like hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide. These are all names you would have heard before. You don't have to learn off any of these. You'll pick them up as you go along. Whereas the weak acids and bases, you tend not to hear so much of them. They may seem more unusual. If you have a look at the likes of ethanoic acids, lots of carbons and hydrogens evolved here. And the same with the weak base, methyl, uh, methylamine. You can see quite organic looking. Also the presence of a lot of nitrogens in there as well. OK, so the weak acids and bases should be less familiar to you compared to this. Another way to recognize strong acids and bases is the strong acids and bases will dissociate fully in aqueous solution. For example, here we have our HCl in water. You know, it will split completely in two, completely break up to form H3O plus and Cl minus. The same with the strong base, the sodium hydroxide will just split in two there to form hydroxide ions and sodium ions in the water. On the other hand, the weak acids and bases do not fully dissociate. They exist in equilibrium. So if we have a look, the arrow goes in both directions. There's both a forward and a backward reaction. Whereas in our strong acids and bases, there is only one direction arrow. It only travels in one direction. So that's another giveaway for strong acids and bases. Acids and bases. The last thing to look out for is this called a dissociation constant. K being the dissociation constant, A being if it's an acid, or it will be the symbol B if you're dealing with a base. If you see one of these symbols, it tells you the degree to which something breaks up. Strong acids and bases fully break up. They do not have a K or a KB value. Only weak ones do. So this usually is the big giveaway of whether you're dealing with uh, a strong or a weak acid or base. So if they're weak, you will have a dissociation constant value. So let's consider this equation here below. Here I have ethanoic acid in water. I can see there's an equilibrium arrow here. So we're looking at something most likely that's going to be weak. And I have it breaking up into H3O plus and CH3CO2 minus. If you're not given this equation, remember, and you're given a Ka value, so you know you're dealing with something weak, just draw a line down the middle here. So the proton is gone and the proton will become H3O plus. And what's left is my CH3CO2 minus. The expression for an equilibrium constant is always given by the degree to which something dissociates, in this case the acid, will always be the products, which in this case is my H3O plus, both products, my CH3CO2 minus, divided by the reactant. And we're told usually the degree to which it breaks up, and in this case it's 1.75 by 10 to the minus 5. So this measures the strength of the weak acid or weak base, in this case we're looking at an acid, the higher this value, the more it breaks up, the lower this value, the less it breaks up. So let's have a look at the calculations then the acid. So often this would come up in the exam. What is the pH of a 0.1 molar hydrozoic acid? You're told what it is, it's HN3 solution at 25 degrees C. What is the percent ionization? And you're given the Ka value of 1.9 by 10 to the minus five. Sometimes you're given this equation, other times you're not. If you're not, you know the fact that you're given a Ka value, you're dealing with something weak. Okay, so what you will just do is go up to your acid, you split it in two, this will become your H plus, your H3O plus, and what's left is your N3 minus. And this then being obviously your original acid that you're dealing with. I'd often set up this table, what I call an ice table, which is for initial change and at equilibrium. And I'll set it up that I have my original acid, and the two products that are formed. So my reactant, I exclude the water, so the reactant, and the two products. So in this case, I have a 0.1 molar hydrozoic acid, HN3. So initially, that's my original concentration of my acid. And before the reaction is even started, so initially I have a reactant, but I have no products, so they'll both be zero. Then I'm going to lose a certain amount, but I don't know how much I've lost. I'm going to have to work that out. And then on the product side, you will have gained it as a result of being lost from the reactants. It's gained on the product side. So at equilibrium, when everything settles down, what am I left with? I have 0 0.1 minus what I lost and 0 plus what I gained. So we're going to call those X and X. So my Ka, the degree to which the acid associates, is equal to my two products, my 
H3O plus ions and my N3 minus ions divided by the reactant. Note that I ignore the water. The water is not included here. So I just have my two products divided by my reactant. So I was given my Ka value, which is 1.9 by 10 to the minus 5. I have let X represent my products, each one of them, X and X, because when this splits, remember, it'll split evenly. So you produce equal amounts of both products. The original concentration of the HN3 is 0 0.1 minus X, so minus what we lost to form both of these products. Now, you'll note that I have the X marked in red, and we have to make an assumption here. And that assumption is that X is so small that when compared to the initial concentration and subtracted from it, it's going to make a negligible difference. Now, in order for that to be justified, it has to be less than 5%. And we will check that when we check our percent ionization later on. So what have I got now? If I use that assumption, my equation should look like this. 1.9 by 10 to the minus 5 is equal to x squared, x by x, making x squared, all divided by 0.1 because I have dropped that x. So what I'm going to do now is transpose the equation to get x on its own and bring all my unknowns to one side. So I now have 1.9 by 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by 0.1, and that's all equal to the x squared. I don't want x squared, I want x. So in order to do that, just take the square root of it, and when you do, you end up at 1.3 by 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter. So let's have a look at what we're working at here. We had our substance, which was our acid, and we had our two products here that were formed. <coughs> H3O plus is represented by X and the N3 minus also represented by X. I've now calculated for X and I know that X is 1.38 by 10 to the minus 3. So I can actually fill in now for these X values. And this is where the table is a very good use. But remember, I have to go back to my assumption and make sure that I can justify it. And this is the percent ionization. So how do we do percent ionization? It's always the acid ions, the product acid ions, divided by the reactant, the original acid, and then to bring it to a percent multiplied by 100. I've worked out the concentration of my acid ions, which is 1.38 by 10 to the minus 3. I look at the original concentration of my reactant acid, which is 0.1. And when I multiply it by 100, I get 1.38%. It's less than 5%, so therefore I was perfectly justified in dropping it from. So let's go back now and look at the concentration of all the species that we had. At equilibrium, my original acid, my HN3, was equal to 0 0.1 minus X. And if we subtract X from it, we end up with 0 0.099 moles per liter, which, as you can see, could be rounded to 0 0.1. So it does make a negligible difference to the original concentration. X we had is 1.38 by 10 to the minus 3 for our acid. And our second X then was our base ions also represented by x, which is 1.38 by 10 to the minus 3. Now, the question asks us to work out the pH. We know that pH is equal to minus log the concentration of the acid ions. We now know the concentration of the acid ions, which is this. And if we fill it in, minus log to the base 10 on your calculator, you end up with 2.86 as your pH. Now, sometimes as well in the exam, what comes up is they have uh, they give you the pH and they ask you to work out the Ka value. So in this case, we're told that we have a 0 0.25 molar solution of HCN and it has a pH of 5. Find the Ka value. So again, if you may not be given this equation, but if you just look at your acid, split it down the middle, this will form a CN minus. This will form your H3O plus. So you'll know what your two products are and you know that this is your reactant. Again, I would set up my ice table where I have my reactant and my two products. Again, it just makes it easy to identify the species and see where you're going. So we know at equilibrium then I will have 0 0.25 minus what I've lost. And then I will have gained X for both of the products. Now, I know that the pH is equal to minus log the concentration of my acid ions. I don't have acid ions, but I do have a pH. And I can use the pH then to find those acid ions if I use the inverse of this equation. And the inverse of this equation is H3O plus is equal to 10 to the power of minus your pH. So what I'm going to fill in for my pH here is 5. So I should have 10 to the power of minus 5. And when I put that into the calculator, I will end up with 1 by 10 to the minus 5. Now remember, let's have a look. 
H3O plus, what's that represented by on our table? It's represented by X. But guess what also is represented by X? My CN minus 2. So I now have an X value. So I can actually fill in and find my values for all three species here. You need to remember that in order to work out In order to work out our Ka value, it's always products divided by reactants. So the Ka is equal to my two products, my H3O plus, my Cn minus, all divided by my original acid. I have a value for my H3O plus and my Cn minus because they're both X, so I would expect they would both be the same. And I know what the concentration of my HCN is, my original concentration minus X, so we can subtract our X in this case. When I put these together, you recognize that they would be 1 by 10 to the minus 5 squared when I put them together, all divided by 0 0.24999, which is essentially 0 0.25. Again, it makes a negligible difference to the value here. So I have 1 by 10 to the minus 10, all divided by 0 0.24999. Put that into your calculator and you will get your dissociation constant for your acid and it will be 4 by 10 to the minus 10. So we've had a look at both ways to do it. The first one being uh, we have the Ka value, we have the original acid concentration, and can you find the pH? And in the second situation, we have the pH, and we're being asked to find the Ka. So we're working backwards in the second step. What happens if we're given a base? Well, it's exactly the same format that you would follow, but instead of having a Ka, you now have a Kb value. But to remember, look at this question in particular, which has often come up. It's asking you to find the pH. Now, this is a little bit tricky, and let's see how we're going to handle this one. So, we're given a Kb value, and I have my base concentration here, which is 0.15 moles of NH3. So, let's have a look here. I set up my ice table as before. I will have my base, original base, and the two products formed as a result. Yeah, so at equilibrium, I'll have my 0 0.15 minus X and my X for my two products, each of them represented by X. The same format as you followed for the acid before, only in this case, you're dealing with the base. Again, we follow the same assumption and we will drop X. So we will have our KB is equal to my two products divided by my original uh, reactant being the base. And again, we're ignoring the water like we did before. We make the assumption by dropping the x, and then we're going to transpose this formula to get x squared on its own as the unknown and all my unknowns to the other side of the equation. In doing so, I end up at 1.76 by 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by 0 0.15 is equal to x squared. But remember, we don't want x squared. We want x. We need to also check our percent ionization. The percent ionization in this case is now the base ions produced so the product base ions divided by the reactant base. Whereas when we we're looking at the acid, it was H3O plus was here and the original acid. But now we're looking at the, the base ions, the hydroxide ions and the original base. And again, multiply by 100. So we can see it's 1%. So we were justified in dropping our X. So we need to go back then, as I said, to our ice tables and have a look at the three species that we had. First of all, we had our base our hydroxide ions and our ammonium ion that was also produced. This is represented by a 0 0.15 minus X. And we see our value when we subtract the X from it is 0 0.148. So again, which is close to 0 0.15. Again, making a negligible difference. So no problem in dropping the X there. X then represented our hydroxide ions and our ammonium ions, both of them. And we have a value for that of 1.62 by 10 to the minus 3 moles per litre. So with that, because we have hydroxide ions, we can find the pOH. The pOH is equal to minus log the concentration of hydroxide ions. We know what our hydroxide ion concentration is, so we just sub it in there, and we get our minus log to the base 10 for that, and we end up with 2.79. Now, the mistake a lot of students make is they actually put in pH here, and they get minus log the concentration of hydroxide ions, but you can't do that. pH goes with H3O plus ions, and pOH goes with hydroxide ions. So when you're dealing with a base, the first thing you have to find is the pOH value. 
Now, the question didn't ask you to find the pOH, it asks you to find the pH. So again, you're going to have to go back to this relationship that you have between the sum of the pH and pOH equal to 14. You now know your pOH, you know that the sum of them will give you 14, so from there you should be able to work out your pH. So the pH is equal to 14 minus your pOH, which is minus 2.79, and that's equal to 11.21. So just watch out for that. When you've worked out your hydroxide ions, you have to find the pOH first. You cannot go directly to pH. And then from there, then, you can use the relationship of pH plus pOH is equal to 14 to elucidate then the pH. The last topic then we're going to look at is ionizations. So we're going to use this relationship of our kW. So if you remember, we had kW was equal to 1 by 10 to the minus 14. That the kW was equal to the amount of acid and base that was produced. So acid, H3O plus, and Kb, your OH minus ions. And collectively, at 25 degrees C, they gave you 1 by 10 to the minus 14. So let's have a look at it. It might come up for that. Determine the dissociation constant for a base for a phenylate in aqueous solution, which reacts as follows. The Ka is 1 by 10 to the minus 10, and the Kw is 1 by 10 to the minus 14. Sometimes they don't give you the Kw value, you'd be expected to remember that, but they will have to give you either a Ka or a Kb, and then you can work out the, the last unknown. So you will use this relationship. Kw is equal to Ka by Kb. You know your Kw, because that's given. You know your Ka, that's also given. So from there, you can work out the one unknown that is left, and that's your Kb. So Kw is equal to Ka multiplied by Kb. So if I want to get Kb on its own, then the Ka will then become divided by the Kw. So I end up with Kb is equal to my Kw, 1 by 10 to the minus 14, divided by my Ka, my 1 by 10 to the minus 10. And then when you work those out, it becomes 1 by 10 to the minus 4 is your Kb. Let's just have a look at one more before we go. Determine the Kb for a hypochlorite ion, OCl minus, an aqueous solution, which reacts as follows. The Ka is 3 by 10 to the minus 8, and your Kw is 1 by 10 to the minus 14. So we have our Kw relationship is equal to Ka by Kb. I know my Kw, 1 by 10 to the minus 14. I know my Ka, 3 by 10 to the minus 8. Find your Kb. Now, the relationship between the Ka and Kb is multiplied by, so when I bring it across the equal sign, it will become divided by. So 1 by 10 to the minus 14 is equal, or sorry, divided by 3 by 10 to the minus 8 is equal to your Kb. Kb, then, is equal to 3.3 by 10 to the minus 7. So that's how we work out ionization constants when we're given one, such as the Ka or the Kb, and we always know our Kw, which is 1 by 10 to the minus 14. We can find the unknown ionization constant from there. So thank you very much. And the next lecture we're going to have a look at in the acid-base series will be indicators.